One of the things that has really impacted us negatively is cellular phone network. There was absolutely zero network here five years ago. We don't have good coverage here, but there are a couple of spots around where the poachers can get cell phone comms. The poachers know where those areas are, so they go to these areas and and uh, get information. You know, someone might have seen a patrol leave, picked up some information where they're going, or maybe a fellow poacher saying, hey, don't come to this area, there's a patrol just moved in. So they share information on the cell phones. They communicate with the people from outside or they communicate with the buyer that they are buying the meat. If they are start preparing the meat to come out from the bush and then they communicate the, the, the customer, the meat is ready and then they telling him which direction they will find and then it's where they will meet and sell the meat and then maybe after two or three days and then they are coming back to poach again. We've had a few poachers willingly surrender their phones and show us the text messages that they've sent back and forth. It's absolutely a problem for us. Fortunately right now we only have sporadic um, coverage and we hope it doesn't get, get much more than that. Another important aspect for both poachers and anti-poaching units is informants. So our anti-poaching unit works closely with several informants that we keep absolutely confidential. Um, they have given us tremendous help over the years, told us when big groups are going in, where they're going, where they're coming out of, what animals they've caught, and it's been a really important part of our operation. But as we use information, so do the poachers as well. I'm also thinking in other way, some other people, they like to use me. They know if they can able to remove me somewhere with my team, they will able to, to get in and poach more. To date, we've never found a staff member directly linked where he's feeding information on a daily basis uh, to anybody or, or on, on, in any sort of organized way. It's not to say it's not happening, but we haven't found concrete evidence of it yet. But what definitely happens is the guys go home from work in the evening, they go down to the local shop, they buy a beer, they sit down, have two beers, their lips loosen a little bit, and interested party will gently pry a little bit of information out of them. Oh, you have a big unit, and do they go everywhere, and whatever, and that's how they very often get um, information out of the system. The other thing is they're very large families here. So a guy will go home and tell his family, well, we had a great patrol in this area yesterday and we caught two poachers and a lot of snares. That's kind of a green light to the poachers. Well, they've been there, they've cleaned it out, so there's probably no one going back. So through the family network, you know, there'll be a scallywag in the middle of it and, and he'll use the information. So we are very careful about telling anybody where people are going to be deployed ahead of deployment. We don't allow any of our rangers to have cell phones on patrol besides the black views which are locked and cannot send messages. So that's pretty much how it works. We've had to move with the times and uh, modernize our equipment. One of the tools that we use is a, a black view phone and they have an app on them called Smart. Each and every group they've got this Smart it's smartphone. It's for collecting all the data from the field. And they've got the names of the team and the names of the rangers that they are using this cell phone. Like this one, they've got number seven. Number seven is Echo. Echo is capitalist Shiko. Is his team leader. To open this cell phone and to get into the patrol. We have to go into this legally thing there. We have to press it. And then they come anti poaching. And then you go to anti poaching. And then they said start the patrol. You have to go to start. And then they will ask you what type of patrol you are using. And then you are going to transport. And then they will show you all the, the type of transport that we are using here. They've got Argo, we've got cake bike, so we've got a, a foot patrol, we've got helicopter, we've got motorbike. So myself, 
I will go back now. I will choose vehicle patrol. It's here. And then I will go to team. Team, I will choose team Romeo. Romeo is Romeo is here now. Now I'm going to employees to see which team that uh, the name of the team that they're using an uh, echo. I'll go there and then I will choose a bear doing my team. I will choose capitalist in my team. I will choose a uh, Dulles and then I will choose uh, Lamington. There are four because each and every group they are working in four, in four groups. And then I will choose Tick. And then I will choose the team leader. Team leader is gonna be Lamidon George. Now all the name, transport type is vehicle, team is Romeo, employees are Pedro Antonio, capitalist is Chico, Dolly is Chico, Chico, Lamidon George, leader is Lamidon George. I have to press that tick to make the phone sleep. Put it in my backpack and then I'm going to patrol because it's already have the GPS coordinator from here. As you find get into the bush, you find something, you turn it on here. Yeah? Let's say maybe you find like two snares, you're going to make observation, you press the observation, and then they will ask you what type of things that you find into the bush. If you find it a poaching camp or poaching, then they will press here. Yeah? Poaching arrest if you arrest the poacher. Poacher escape if the poacher runs away. People warned if there's some people who find into the position that they are not supposed to be. Uh, camp destroy if you, you find a camp that you destroy. Dog shot if you kill any dogs from the poacher from the bush. If there's another observation, maybe they've got a push knife or something, you add observation and then you're going to equipment material. There is all the material from the push that the people are using. They've got knives. How many knives? Two. And then you put it in. And then you say correct. And then you say correct. And then you say correct. And then you're going to save now. Save all the information that you get. You go to save. Now they will give you the right place where you, where you find those people. As you see those round things start turning, it's where they will start downloading the GPS coordinator of the place where you find the people. And this, when they come back to camp, it shows the whole route that the rangers took. It's got a GPS facility, so they can't pull the wool over your eyes where the patrol has happened, and they record everything that they've seen, as well as things like lion activity, leopard activity, and the things that we monitor, in addition to any instance of poachers. Poachers camps, snares, gin traps, number of animals caught, etc., etc. And that helps us tremendously with a trend over time that we know November is a dry month, we've got to watch all the areas with water. During the wet season, there's no access to the floodplain. We've got to be more prevalent on the forest. It's been a great app to record and to help us. More recently, we have put up a, a digital radio system with live tracking. It's given us about 80% coverage of our area and we are able to track each unit with a radio as to exactly where they are at any time. It also has an emergency function, so if they were to find themselves outnumbered by a group of poachers or if they needed quick response from the helicopter to help, they simply push a button and it gives us an emergency warning which enables us to react.